Hi and welcome to Rose Red Homestead. Today we have a little bit of clearing up to do, some misconceptions that need to be rectified. And so I'm going to start with that because we always want to give as accurate an, of information as we possibly can on our channel. In our most recent video prior to this one where I compared the two canners, the Presto Digital and the Instant Pot Max, one of the things that I said about the Presto Digital was that um, it's one size fits all and that when you get a one size fits all, there's a price to pay. So several people tried to uh, communicate to me that that wasn't exactly the case with the Presto and the way they explained it, it, it also had other science misconceptions in there and so I just discarded it because it just didn't seem rational to me. However, one gentleman who watched our videos just gave me a four-liner that said da 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 and I thought, oh, of course, that is probably how it works. And as I looked at other information and checked in with other people, um, this is going to be good news for those of you who use the Presto canner. Um, the thing that I was concerned about is that everybody was telling me that, oh, it's, it's based on temperature, it's based on temperature. All canners are based on temperature. And somebody said it doesn't use pressure, it just uses temperature, and that's an impossibility because without the pressure, the temperature couldn't get up into the kill zone. Anyway, all of that aside, let me explain how the Presto seems to work. So the, the Presto right here in this little nub measures the temperature in the pot. And when the temperature gets up into the kill zone, because the pressure has raised it up there, once the temperature hits the kill zone, then it holds it in the kill zone until you cut the heat or until it has been there long enough. You can't do anything with it. It does everything on its own. And so um, this one also has a temperature sensor, which I showed in the last video. But this one brings it up to 15 pounds of pressure because we know what the temperature is going to be, and I verified that with my data. This one then uses whatever elevation, and because water boils at different temperatures, it's going to take longer for it to get up into the kill zone at my elevation than it is at sea level. And so if we can trust the manufacturer and that there's no electronic um, errors anywhere, then this little uh, temperature sensor right here will bring it up into the kill zone because the pressure raises it up there and then once it gets there the pressure will hold it uh, through the kill zone. Now what my, um, and so anyway, the good news for those of you at sea level is that there won't be any overcooking on the front end. Um, sadly, my um, data shows that there is overcooking on the back end because it keeps the food in the kill zone much, much, much longer than is necessary. And so that's still kind of a caveat with this one if, if we're concerned about it. Today, I've had so many questions about, well, if your um, meat sauce didn't quite pass this test, what about ground meat? And so today, we are going to do ground meat in both the Presto and in the Max. I've had a lot of requests to get back to showing some canning videos in the Max. So I just thought I would kill two birds with one stone. So we came home from work today with a ton of ground meat. And um, here it is. And so we're gonna get started on our project here in just a moment. Presto, I have eight pint jars half filled with water and I am just about to start the warming up. And then while it is warming up, we are going to work on the other canner. So I'm going to lock, the, um, lock this in place, removing the regulator, 
and then I'm going to come around and it's on it says pressure can so I'm going to advance it the processing time for ground meat is 75 minutes so we're going to get that time in there right now the time is in there so now we're going to advance it and um, it says what does that say warm jars so it says warm jars so we're starting the jar warming process all right while that one is going we're going to get the other one started oh and i did have three quarts of water in the bottom i'm doing everything according to regulations so the instant pot max holds four pints we're going to get started with the instant pot max um, these jars are just out of the dishwasher so they are warm now i'm going to tell you how i prepared this meat this meat may look, this ground meat, may look like it is completely cooked, but it is not. Uh, the directions, the USDA directions say saute the meat. Saute the meat doesn't cook it all the way through. The reason that we want to pre-cook this meat a little bit is that we do not want it chunking on us in the inside and glomming into great big gloms that are difficult for the heat to penetrate through. So just think about that. So um, we're going to, and this was eight pounds of ground meat, and um, as I was uh, cooking it, I also measured it as I was taking it out of the pan. So we should easily have 12 pints here. And um, now the meat is in the jar, and so I am going to, um, it, we have our choice according to the USDA. We can now fill this up to within one inch of the top, leaving in a one inch head space, with either water or tomato juice or beef bouillon. So I'm gonna use beef bouillon, but I'm gonna do it in a unique way. Instead of making that bouillon ahead of time, I'm just gonna sprinkle that uh, powder right there and then I'm going to add the boiling water because the water needs to be boiling according to the USDA so we certainly are going to do that and so there we have that and then I'm going to and and that bouillon is already dissolved and I'm going to check for air bubbles and I'm going to wipe the rim Very hot. The meat is still hot, by the way. Lid ring, and in the counter it goes. So I'm gonna uh, finish with these four jars, and then we'll bring you back. While we were gone, I remembered that um, I still have to advance it one more notch to get it over to warm. It was just on the insert jars, and I'd already inserted the jars. So now we can tell that it's warming because the lights are moving in the direction to the right. When it cools down, those lights go the other way. So we're warming the jars. Now, to this canner. Now remember, I have preset this for our elevation at 5,000 feet. So it is going to use probably about 13 to 15 pounds of pressure to get everything up to um, the right temperature because it is temperature that kills botulism. It is not the pressure. All right, so I'm putting the lid on. And now I hit pressure cook. And I'm going to move the minutes to 15 because it's 75 minutes, which is the same as an hour and 15 minutes. So I touch the hour section move it to one. So that's an hour and 15 minutes, 75 minutes processing time, and my elevation is already set. Pressure is up to max. Temperature is not gonna show anything because I haven't hit start yet. The venting is exactly where I want it, so I'm going to start. So it has told me now that the temperature inside the pot is 87 degrees, and we can just watch this climb and climb and climb. Um, I'll be able to tell when this gets into the kill zone, um, it gets up to about, usually about um, 247, and I know from my own data that, that, it, that the inside of the pot is about two degrees, sometimes three degrees um, warmer than what the food inside is. So if it's 247, I'm in the kill zone, so I'm not concerned. So um, then the venting is natural release, so I'm just going to let it cool down on its own. 
All right, now we wait for this canner over here to finish its jar warming, and then we will fill the jars and insert them. So we'll come back when we're ready for that. So it's been about 10 minutes. This canner's been running for 10 minutes. What does the temperature say, Jim? 145. So 145 up, up already here. Here we are now able to fill the jars. So I just open this up. Sometimes doing this backward is complicated for me. And we remove the jars one at a time and fill them. Now because I am going to take the data on this batch, I have my logger right here. I just started it and at my computer it is set for one minute intervals. So I'm just going to put it right down there in the very center of the bottom. And then we're going to pour the meat in around it very gently. Good, we got it. One teaspoon, one leveled teaspoon. And the boiling water. One inch headspace. D bubble. Wipe rim. Lid and ring. And in the can, oh, I need to mark that top. because my lager is in this one. And there we have it. So I will finish filling these jars and we'll come back as we are ready to start the canner. All of the pints are filled with beef and the bouillon and we are now ready to go ahead and start the next part for this canner is the venting. And so the jars are filled we advance it and heat. So it is heating up. It's going to vent, once it gets hot, it's going to vent for 10 minutes. 10 will show on here when it is hot enough to start that venting and then it will um, start, then the, the 10 minutes will start. Meanwhile, this canner over here is now over at 223, well above the boiling point for our elevation. Still, it's only saying on. It is not giving us the 75 minutes, which is telling us that, ooh, 222 is pretty high. It's above boiling, but it's not hot enough. We're not going to start the um, processing until it gets higher. So we'll be back when the next step occurs. So this one just finished its venting cycle. So it's telling us to put the regulator on and go into the canning phase. So we're going to do that. Okay, this one, this one has been going for 14 minutes. It's counting down from an hour and 15 minutes. Our temperature is 237. Oh, I have to advance this. It's telling me advance, advance. Okay, so there's our 75 minutes processing. And it's not there yet. It has to heat up some more to get the pressure going so that it will lift the temperature up into the kill zone. So this one has been now going for 15 minutes. It's at 237, almost at the kill zone at 240. Uh, none of the canners start the processing in the kill zone. They work up to it and then they hold it for a while. So we are going to leave both of these canners alone now until it is time for this one will most likely finish first and it has a quicker cool down than this one does. So most likely we'll be back with the max and we'll take the jars out, see how they look and I'll um, let you know what the results were there. And then when this one is finished, I'll analyze the data and we'll see if we had a safe canning um, session this time. So we'll see you in a while. It is 9 p.m. and we are still at it. I've changed my, out of my um, office clothes, obviously. This is my work clothes from home. And um, we have one canner that has completely finished. The lid lock just unlocked, so we know that it's safe to open it up. Now, I have some sad news to report on this one. And um, that is that it, it did not get up into the kill zone. It got up to 230 
9. And, uh, and that is all. And this is canned exactly how the USDA um, instructions state that it needed to be canned. And I had Jim reread it, and he said, you did everything just exactly right. Now, here is the thing. Um, because it was 239, and it pretty much held between 238 and 239 for the entire time once it reached up there, um, what I did was I took um, the temperature of 238 and I ran it through my algorithm um, in my Excel file. And the bottom line is that um, this does meet the, the safety number. Now let me tell you how that works um, because it's going to be a big reveal. There is nothing magic about 240. Um, 240 is what arbitrarily um, the USDA selected as the kill zone between 240 and 250. And I've disclosed this to one of our subscribers who said earlier today, commented that um, countries in Europe don't have pressure canners, and I know that because people have said that um, as they've commented on our videos, and they have been canning low pressure foods, I mean low acid foods for years, safely using water bath. Here's the thing, and this is how that algorithm works. So a, a botulism spore doesn't live and live and live until, oops, magically it hits 240 and then it kicks the bucket. Um, there's a whole range of temperatures where if they are at that temperature long enough, it will kill them. And that range of temperatures can be as low as 230, even a little bit lower. But here's the deal. In Europe, the way that they got away with doing that is that they would process water bath, low acid water bath foods for hours and hours and hours, even sometimes several days, in order to get the proper kill. Um, our USDA didn't want any of that. They wanted using the materials and the equipment that we can use in our homes. They wanted to set a standard, um, and that standard would be met, and the kill zone was established. And so by tradition, that's what we use. But I have that algorithm. And I've had our PhD math professor um, at my university double check everything. And he says it's right on. In fact, he's now using it for uh, one of his calculus classes to have them calculate problems with. So I know that that algorithm works. I took it right out of the literature that is used all over the home canning industry. So these are safe. Um, but this did not meet USDA minimum of getting that temperature up above 240. And so I, can, I, I, I need to say that the MAX failed the ground meat test. And because most of you do not have any way of testing the internal temperature, I would say do not can ground beef in a max. Um, if you have, and if the temperature got up into the 230s, you're probably just fine, but not by USDA standards. So if we're going to be persnickety about sticking with USDA standards, then personally I'm not going to use this. I've used this probably 20, maybe 30 times, and in every other batch, every other batch, and I've never done ground meat before, it was 247, 248. And because the food temperature in all of my data inside the jar was just two um, degrees lower than that, I knew that I was safe. So I am not recommending the max for doing ground meat. Uh, per the USDA standards, even though that I know that this is safe. Let's take a look at this canner. Uh, the Max finished 25 minutes before this one did. This one is still in cool down, and it will give us a 10 minute warning. The 10 minute sign kicks on, and then it counts down 987 all the way to zero, and then we can open this canner, and I will retrieve my uh, data logger. I, I don't have two data loggers, but since my data tells me, informs me what the food temperature was here. I'm perfectly fine with this the way it is. Uh, but I'll retrieve the data logger, run the data, and then I'll uh, bring that back to report to you uh, when that time comes. And it's probably going to be at least another hour. This one cools down. It takes a long time for this one to cool down. This one cooled down in about an hour and five minutes. 
fastest time ever, but it didn't get up as high as it usually does either. So we'll see you soon. Uh, so it's 10 o'clock and it's our bedtime. So we're gonna get to this very quickly. First of all, I wanted to show you, this is the jar that my um, lager was in. And if you can see right here, this yellowish, this is fat. And I got all the fat out that I possibly could. That's what the USDA suggests. When this um, cools, this is gonna turn white. And um, I, ha I get lots of questions on what is that whitish stuff at the top of my ground hamburger? Don't worry about it, it's just a little bit of fat and it won't hurt a thing. And it doesn't hurt the food at all. So um, these are the four that came out of the max. And these are the seven and then the eighth one that my lager was in. And I bet you're all wanting to know what the results is. So here's my famous data book. So let's open it up. We had an amazing success in the Presto. So this is what it looked like. Um, here's the processing time for 75 minutes. And um, here is the kill zone. It stayed in the kill zone uh, an hour and 28 minutes, um, which is way long to be in the kill zone. And so even though we got, um, these are very, very safe and the margin of error is absolutely huge. One of the biggest numbers I've ever gotten. But there's, uh, it, the upside to that is that it's safe. The downside is and continues to be with the Presto. And now this is the only thing that I'm concerned about with the Presto and that is it just stays in the kill zone for such a dang long time and way, way, way longer than is necessary. Um, so therefore your food gets cooked at a higher pressure for longer than is necessary. Um, I just wanna say that I'm nobody official. I am a housewife, a professor, a wife, a mother, just a normal person who has a curiosity about these things. Mostly I have done this research for me, for us, to find out if these machines, these canners are safe at our elevation. And um, I've had so many requests to do um, these, and so many of you are buying these and using them, that I thought, I just need to share the results. Feel free to discard my results. Uh, hopefully there will be official results coming out soon from one of the university extension offices. USDA no longer tests things, so it will be coming from an extension office. So we can all celebrate when that comes out. And I don't know whether they will bear out my um, findings or not. Um, one of the studies that I just recently read said that they're not, they don't pass canners unless they can get up into the kill zone, the top level of the kill zone. But once again, the Presto, the highest that it got was um, 117 which is um, 244 Fahrenheit. And so it's just barely in there. But if it, but being barely in is still in. And so if it gets in at every elevation the way it claims, then we're okay. If it adjusts according to temperature and uses the pressure only to get up to the kill zone in whatever elevation it is, that is great. But my, um, one down thing is the amount of time that the food spends in the kill zone, which is far beyond. It is more than 20 times what is needed to make it safe and it, in this particular one. So that is the conclusion. I'm sad about the max. I've never had a failure with the max, but I won't be canning hamburger in the max for sure. I'm gonna redo the, the meat, Italian meat sauce. We had some for dinner tonight and Oh my gosh, it was so thick. And so I am thinking that maybe it needs to be thinned down. So we'll keep working on that aspect and I'll keep you posted as we go. We're gonna turn our attention with these videos to other things now. We've pretty much done enough on the canning testing for a while. So thanks for joining us for this um, cleanup video and we will see you at our next video.